Fate of LLM as a judge is still out there. OpenAI has recently released a paper indicating how they used a new model called Critic GPT to catch bugs of GPT-4. Now this Critic GPT is actually a fine-tuned model of GPT-4 and according to OpenAI, this model has done a better job than the vanilla chat GPT or the vanilla GPT-4 version. We're going to go over the paper and understand what OpenAI has done. One important takeaway for me from this paper is that we can all assure that fine tuning actually works in a lot of cases. And recently I've been part of a lot of conversations where we had discussions about whether fine tuning is the right approach or if we should stick to only RAG. And this is one particular use case where we can actually see that the fine tuning has actually helped the model pick up better bugs from the code inserted by humans. So I'm going to jump into the paper and link the paper in the YouTube description. I hope you enjoy this. LLM critiques help catch LLM bugs. So, or you can say the GPT-4 help catch GPT-4 bugs. Now, this is a paper from uh, OpenAI and it is quite interesting to see Jan Lickes name because Jan has already left the company. So reinforcement learning from human feedback, RLHF is one of the most important alignment techniques in open AI models. It's a final step almost where open AI tries to give preference to the model what humans would prefer. And how do open AI know what humans would prefer? Because open AI has hired a lot of AI trainers or annotators who look at these different responses and then rate, this is the preference, this is my response. And that has a bottleneck because you, of course, need human beings. And also you need human beings who all think alike. You need the same kind of assistance from these human beings. Like otherwise a particular AI trainer might not catch some a bug, which, you know, some other AI trainer might catch. And that is a bottleneck that they are trying to overcome with this particular work where they have trained a critique model that help humans to accurately, more accurately evaluate the model written code. This is especially for code programming evaluation. These critics are themselves LLM trained with RLHF. So the critique model or the critique GPT in this case also went through RLHF to write natural language feedback, highlighting problems in the code from real world assistant tasks on code containing natural occurring LLM errors, model written critiques are preferred over human critics in 63% of cases. So if a human has critiqued something, a model has written a critic, model written critiques have been preferred 63% times. That's, that's quite impressive. And human evaluation finds that models catch more bugs than human contractors paid for code review. Does it mean the model is doing a better job than humans? Yeah, I'm not getting into that argument. We further confirm that our fine tuned LLM critiques can successfully identify hundreds of errors in ChatGPT training data rated as flawless previously rated as flawless by human beings. Now, because of this model, thanks to this critic GPT, they've managed to find out that it is not flawless. It has got its own errors, even though the majority of the tasks are non code tasks and thus out of distribution for critic model. So finally, uh, human machine teams of critics and contractors catch a similar number of bugs to LLM critics while hallucinating less than LLMs alone. So LLM, LLM plus human, human in the loop is better than LLMs alone. And uh, to quickly jump into the contributions of this particular paper. So uh, they are uh, actually talking about uh, having a model that can uh, be fine tuned. And also with RLHF, it can do a better job in catching bugs. And uh, these bugs were actually inserted by the human trainers and the that's how they train the model. And the human machine team is actually a good combination rather than machine in in itself. Probably this is happy news for human beings. And they are also introducing a new technique called force a sampling beam search FSBS, which we are not going to discuss in this particular video. If there is an interest, I will definitely make a separate video. So how does the result look like? So if you see the win rate, chat GPT alone and critic GPT, and you can see the uh, both uh, chat GPT and critic GPT critics are preferred by annotators over human critics of the model output on code with human inserted bugs. So you might ask a question like, first of all, okay, there are three groups here. One is humans. One is the vanilla chat GPT, which is GPT four powered chat GPT. And the one is the critique GPT, which is fine tuned, especially to catch the bugs. So what this chart shows is that, that uh, chat GPT um, also catches these bugs. But when you see critique GPT, it is like farther, like really 
far above chat gpt so this is for everybody who's asking the question why can't i do with chat gpt and i think this is a very good uh, as testament to say that fine tuning works in a lot of different cases where the data of what you want to fine tune is already part of your training data and you are just giving that extra steerability through fine tuning you're not teaching something completely like brand new to the model you're not trying to imbibe a new knowledge into the model all you're trying to do is the model knows something you're trying to teach it right or wrong with existing knowledge within the training data and this is like a testament to that particular statement so in this case the human inserted bug that is caught so you can see how many percentage humans have caught chat gpt and critic gpt and critic gpt as you can see here has done a substantially much better job than human and chat gpt and if you see uh, particularly what we are trying to do here is so there is a task and uh, the chat gpt or gpt4 model has been expected to write code but when the code has been written you can see that okay it actually starts with an absolute path and the critic gpt says oh checking if an absolute path of a file within a directory by using starts with is insecure users could exploit this with symlinks or by naming directories similarly using something something or more robust method of a path containment is advisable so this should not be the preferred solution which has been advised by critic gpt now this knowledge along with the human annotators or ai trainers they would say that okay probably this is the answer that they should not prefer and they should go with a slightly better answer how do they come up with it this is how they do the data collection so you have a question like a prompt and there is a response for that and the critic gpt uh, generates like n critics like you have a b c d and uh, human annotators actually manually in insert the bug so you can see that the human annotators insert the bug and then they write the critic humans write the critic about what is the problem with the inserted bug and then the critic has been generated with chat gpt or critic gpt here in this case so first there is code without any bug humans insert a bug they also write an explanation about what is the problem with the bug and that is what has been used to train or fine tune critic gpt and based on that you get the score of the critic score and then you you finally get the ranking okay b is better than a a is better than d d is better than c and this is like the preference ranking if you are familiar with dpo direct preference optimization this is very similar like that which is what has been used in the rlhf in this particular case and uh, you can see uh, there are a couple of other interesting informations about how this critic gpt alone like this model alone is much better than the vanilla chat gpt so you can see critic gpt uh, actually having much better win rate and the probability of missing a bug is higher with the vanilla chat gpt one important thing that we cannot all ignore is the hallucination so if you see the hallucination we know that llms typically hallucinate i mean humans also do hallucinate that's what this particular data shows that llms hallucinate and humans also hallucinate but if you see the combination of human plus critic gpt the hallucination or nitpicking has been uh, much lesser than everything else so you can see here humans you can see critic gpt you can see chat gpt here you have got human plus critic gpt and here you have got human plus critic gpt and uh, the hallucination has been uh, quite less with the human plus critic gpt i think overall this is an interesting paper and i'm not getting into fsbs but again if you see uh, the entire detail here so the main thing is the primary takeaway is the fine tuning works in cases like this where you don't have to insert external knowledge and also that you can fine tune a model for a particular case like we are not using llm as a judge per se here but still we are using llm to get some kind of a score some kind of a preference and that is primarily i think probably in this case is much better than your typical average llm as a judge primarily also because the way the data has been uh, used here and i'm also not sure if uh, the rl training the reinforcement training the reward model has any kind of benefit here or the average llm as a judge where it is primarily a prompting technique so those are open questions that i would like to explore if you have any thought let me know in the comment section otherwise see you in another video happy prompting